Hi, it's Kirby Summers, and today is Sunday, February 25th. We're going to do a deep dive into Bill Clinton. Um, this is part one. It's a patron-only podcast. It's a patron-only exclusive. And, um, you know, I decided to base to kind of share the information on Clinton because clearly we know that he flew 26 times on Jeffrey Epstein's 727, known as, quote, the Lolita Express, end quote. And frankly, that's only like a small uh, view because we don't have all of the flight logs. Epstein had four different pilots and we only have the flight logs, I believe, for one or two of them. What we also know about Clinton's very close relationship to Jeffrey Epstein is that um, during the beginning of Clinton's presidency, Epstein visited the White House at least 17 times in those early years. And so based on that and the fact that nobody has really done a deep dive on Bill Clinton, and a lot of the stuff that was happening in Arkansas and a lot of Hillary connected information, so on and so forth. I thought that, hey, you know, why not do a deep dive on Clinton? Let me keep it here on Patreon, where basically I feel my information is um, a little bit more secure. So before I get started, do me a favor, give this a like um, and you know, hey, let's just let's just start at the beginning. Uh, Clinton was born on August 19, 1946. His full name at the time was William Jefferson Blythe the uh, third. His father was a traveling salesman uh, who died uh, in an automobile accident three months before his birth. His mother's name is Virginia Dell Cassidy. Later, she became Virginia Kelly, and his parents were married in, on September 4th, 1943, but Blythe was still married to his fourth wife, and so basically the marriage was considered bigamy and therefore not legal. Uh, Virginia went on to go to New Orleans, where she studied nursing after Bill was born. However, she left him behind in Arkansas with her parents, Eldridge and Edith Cassidy, who had a small grocery store that, you know, basically supplied money for the family. And at the time, uh, the South was very racially segregated. Uh, Clinton's grandparents sold goods on credit to basically people of all colors, they didn't really think about race. That's probably one of the only good things that can be said about Clinton and his family. However, I digress. Um, in 1950, his mother basically said enough. She doesn't want to keep going to nursing school. She married Roger Clinton, the senior, who was the co-owner of uh, a car dealership in Hot Springs, Arkansas. And the father, the family then, you know, kind of settled in 1950 in Arkansas. Now, the thing about his mother is that um, she liked to drink. She was a very outgoing woman and she was not necessarily some, uh, uh, let's call it a one uh want because she wasn't necessarily I'm trying to find a very gentle word she wasn't um someone who remained let's call it true to her husband if you get my drift um it wouldn't be until Clinton is 15 that he formally adopts the surname as Clinton all right so until the age of 15 he's still known as Blythe uh, when he is, we're going now back to when he was seven, his family uh, kind of is in the area where Al Capone uh, spent a lot of time. He spent a lot of time at a place called the Arlington Hotel. And 
Clinton's stepfather is somebody who has a gun. He's an alcoholic. He goes on to lose his Buick franchise because of mismanagement and his own pilfering of the company. He physically abuses his family, including young Bill. And, you know, his mother has now taken up gambling. According to FBI files and local police officials, his uncle Raymond, who's basically a mentor to young Bill, is also someone who is very mobbed up. You know, he owns a slot machine. He's a gambling operator. Um, and then, you know, they, the, the family gambling operations are a franchise of the Marcello organization of the mafia. So they're, they, they're linked to the mob from the very early days. In the 1960s, a federal investigation concludes that Hot Springs, you know, where Clinton and his family are living, has the largest illegal gambling operations in the entire United States. Um, he goes on uh, during this period to attend Georgetown University, where his mentor is one of the professors and the professor's name is Carol Quigley. Quigley later writes that the two political parties should represent opposed ideals and policies and that it's a foolish idea. And he goes on to uh, insist that instead the two parties should be almost identical. Uh, the policies that are vital and necessary for America are no longer subjects of significant disagreement, but are disputable only in detail, procedure, priority, or method. Um, this is a very um, pivotal moment for how Clinton views the political machine. And according to several sources interviewed by a biographer, Roger Morris, um, he was basically an informer of the CIA while almost like he wasn't in, at school every day. He was a Rhodes Scholar in England and without any visible means of support, he starts to travel around Europe, including going to the Soviet Union, where he stayed at some of the ritziest hotels in Moscow. During this period, the United States government is using well-educated assets like Clinton as part of Operation Chaos, which is sort of like um, their covert attempt to break student resistance to the war and the draft in Vietnam. So from the very early days, Clinton is uh, considered to be a CIA asset. Um, Clinton and his friend Jim McDougal, Mac, I'm sorry, Jim McDougal, get a job in the office of Senator J. William Fulbright. And the Washington Post will later write, uh, McDougal was interested in making money while Clinton was obsessed with political stature. Um, after Clinton became involved in politics, he met Wellesley graduate Hillary Rodham um, and the two decided that they were a good sort of like a pair uh, for Bill's political machine. By this time he was a known womanizer. Uh, by the time that he graduated from high school he was boasting that he had had um let's call it relations with over 1,000 1, girls. Um, in 1974, theoretically, his uncle Raymond, remember, mob connection, gets Clinton a $10,000 loan and a couple of free houses, which are used for Bill's campaign to run for Congress. Um, there, I mean, the first 
taste of political connections is in 1974. He doesn't win, but he starts flying around with one of uh, Raymond's drinking buddies, um, a druggist and gambling operator by the name of Gabe Crawford, who has a private plane. So that is the first private plane that Bill Clinton is known to have been flying in. And this concludes part one. I'm going to just keep going uh, throughout the years, showing you how Bill Clinton became accustomed to money, fast life, women, and the intelligence connections of the United States, as, as well as with, you know, a black male and an insatiable uh, sexual appetite that gets him into a lot of trouble and that frankly leaves behind a trail of dead bodies. So once again, please give this a like and stay tuned for part two.